Okay, so next we're looking at section two, reading passage two. So just taking a look at this, this is actually quite a challenging reading one because it's so many paragraphs. So it doesn't easily lend itself to scanning or, or reading first. So when it's sort of broken down like a traditional like paragraph, you can focus on the first the first sentence of each paragraph to get a, a feeling for the topic. But this is sort of like a more detailed description with a lot of different paragraphs. So let's look at the question types that we've got. So we've got yes, no, not given, um, which is everyone's favorite type of question. Um, we've got like a pit choosing three about sort of specific information about the which includes specific information to get from the passage, which is about part of the da this database compiled by this doctor. And um, then we've got like filling in answers, information that we've gained from the passage, okay? So let's just take a quick scan um, at the passage and see what it's talking about. Look at the title, very important to always check the title. How 9,000 lists written over 300 years are helping to test the theories of economic growth, okay? Um, so it's a sort of, I'm guessing, historical one. Um, we're talking a little bit about e economics, which I don't really know anything about. So let's see. Let's, um, because the first two paragraphs are quite short, I would probably instinctively just read these first two paragraphs to see what's up. So in 1752, Juliana Schweikert, a 50-year-old spinster living in the small black forest community of Wilburg, was reprimanded by the local weavers' guild for weaving cloth and combing wool counter to guild ordinance. So this is actually quite a complex topic. Um, because it's a lot of sort of specific old historical English words, which I think a lot of candidates aren't very familiar with. A lot of candidates focus on tending to read stuff to do with science and geography. A lot of IELTS um, reading passages come from National Geographic or, or, or similar places. So it's quite interesting that this one um, is sort of more historical, but that does mean some of the language is a bit more difficult to understand. So a weaver's guild is basically like the association of people making cloth. So everyone whose job was to make cloth, they had like a little council, leadership council, and that's called a guild, okay? Anyone who plays them online, maybe if people who play online games know what a guild is, because that's also the name for like World of Warcraft or, or playing online. You make a group, you make a guild. So let's take a look at this one. When Juliana continued taking jobs reserved for male guild members, she was summoned before the guild court and fined the equivalent of one third of a maid servant's annual wages. The entire affair was then recorded neatly in a ledger. So a ledger is like a, a list or like a record keeping. Okay, so we can see that this is sort of telling us a story. It's telling us the story of this lady, Juliana. Um, and it's sort of some, she got in trouble in the past for doing jobs that were supposed to only be done by men. Okay, so that's kind of the feeling of it, but I feel like we've not got into the actual detail of what the topic of this article is about. It's just giving us details of this story. So then I would think, okay, I need to read the next section uh, to find out what the actual topic of the reading passage is about. What makes this detail of Juliana's life so interesting is that it is one among a vast number of observations in a huge database on the lives of Southwest German villagers between 1600 and 1900. Okay, so now we're sort of getting into it. So this is just one example of um, a specific life that we can read about from a German villager who lived a couple of hundred years ago. Built by a team led by Professor Sheila Ogilvy in the University of Cambridge's Faculty of Economics, the database includes court records, guild ledgers, parish registers, village censuses, tax lists, and the most recent edition, 9,000 handwritten inventories listing over a million personal possessions belonging to ordinary women and men across three centuries. Ol uh believes that they may hold the answer to a conundrum that has long puzzled economists. So conundrum question. The lack of evidence for a causal link between education and a country's growth and development. Okay, so, okay, so now I've read this paragraph. Now I sort of get a feeling for what the topic of this whole article is, okay? So it's about this professor from the University of Cambridge. She's built a database using records from this small German village. And she's using this data to try and find a link between education and economic growth. OK, so we know that now. OK, so now I'm going to take a quick look at the questions and see what's up for our yes, no, not given. Juliana. <laughs> Schweikert's story is, I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her name. 
is interesting because it is unique. Okay, so yes, no, or not given. So Juliana Schweitzer, so she's being discussed in these first two paragraphs we just read. And I remember that it specifically said, um, what makes this detail of Juliana's life so interesting is that it is one of, is that it is one among a vast number of observations in a huge database, okay? So it's just one of many, okay? It's not unique. So unique means one at a kind, okay? So we know straight away this one's quite straightforward, no, okay? It's not unique, it's one in a vast number of observations. Question 16, better education enables people in several ways, which should be key factors in economic growth. Okay, so this is a slightly awkwardly worded one. Um, so we said we're looking for key phrases. Better education enables people um, several ways and economic growth. Okay, so this is the thing where we now need to start scanning. Okay, so this is the, the section where your scanning skills are going to be really important about being able to quickly look through the text to find words that are synonyms or the same word meaning as what's in the question. Okay, so in the fifth paragraph I'm looking through, I can see that education helps us to work more productively. To, oh, actually, in the fourth paragraph, rather. education helps us to work more productively, invent better technology, earn more, have fewer children, invest more in them. Surely it must be critical for economic growth. Okay, so we've got our keyword here, economic growth and education. Okay, and then in several ways, okay, and then she's listed the several ways that education helps us. Several keywords, so the keyword says the answer is going to be yes, because you see better education enables people in several ways, which should be key factors in economic growth. Okay, so this is our key factor. Um, we think it should be, right? We assume that better education helps promote economic growth. So we've got here, education helps us, blah, 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 blah. Surely it must be critical for economic growth. And she's asking a question here, right? So this is how we know that this is, this is yes, because she is saying she's making her guess, right? Surely it must be critical for economic growth, okay? She doesn't know, but she's making an assumption, okay? And that's the same as we've got here for should be. It should be key factors in economic growth. However, and then she changes into her but, okay? So, however, when you actually look at the evidence, it's not quite so clear. Okay, so this one is going to be, yes, it should be, Surely it must be, okay, but we don't know for sure. Okay, question 17, the amount of education people receive has risen, risen steadily over time, okay? So if we look at risen steadily and the amount of education, okay, so that's what we're skimming for. So if we look at the paragraph below, um, she explains that between 1600 and 1900, England had only mediocre literacy rates by European standard, yet its economy grew fast and it was the first country to industrialize. Germany and Scandinavia had excellent liter literacy rates, their economies grew slowly and they industrialized late. Modern cost country efforts struggle to, find, struggle to find evidence that education causes economic growth, even though there's plenty of evidence. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got talking about literacy rates, so the amount of education. It's sort of a paraphrase of like, has a similar meaning to literacy rates. So she talks about literacy rates as being mediocre, being good. She talks about economic growth. She doesn't give information about how much, okay? She doesn't give an amount of education. So she doesn't say the more education, people got more education over time, literacy rates rose across Europe or anything like that, okay? So she's not specifically mentioned it. She's not talked about it. So that's how we know it's a not given, okay? So next, look at po po Professor o Ogilvy thinks that database will support previous ed evidence of the connection between education and personal wealth. Um, so we know that this one is going to be no, because when we look at the ninth paragraph, previous studies usually just had one proxy for linking education with economic growth, which is the presence of schools and printing presses or school enrollment, enrollment, the database gives us multiple indicators for the same individuals. So here she's saying previous studies 
is a synonym for previous evidence. Scroll down a little bit more, sorry. So previous evidence, previous studies, just one proxy for linking education economic growth. Um, And linking education with economic growth is similar to connection between education and personal wealth. And connection between education and personal wealth. Um, however, it's saying that her database will support previous evidence, while she just says that there's only one proxy. Okay. So she's not actually come to any conclusion yet. Okay. So it contrasts just one proxy relates, which relates to previous studies, with multiple indicators for Professor Olgov's database. So therefore, the answer is going to be no for that one. Professor, question 19, Professor Olgov makes the point that local groups which held economic power would work against any threat to their sources of income. So we need to go a bit further down. So we're looking for local groups would work against any threat to their sources of income. So they oppose as opposition. So when we look down here, um, she says in this paragraph, we know that literacy rates and book ownership were high, yet the region remained poor. We know that local guilds, local groups, local guilds, uh, were powerful and resisted changes that threatened their monopolies. Okay, Resisted changes, which would probably include also education. Okay, so we know that this one is going to be yes. They did do that. Um, question 20, if poor people are educated, they can easily overcome other restraints on economic productions. Easily overcome. Okay, so this is going to be our keywords for poor people and how easily they can overcome problems. Um, we can see poor people here. Um, it's like if restrictions block people from using their education, you can raise huge amounts of this spending for fails with economic growth. And restrictions block people from using their education in economic productive ways. If economic institutions are poorly set up, education can't lead to growth. So she's saying basically, she's saying even if people are educated, other things, um, there are other barriers, there are other problems, there are other restrictions which stop people from benefiting from their education even if they are educated. Okay, so this one, question 20, is going to be no. So you scroll down question 21 to 23, um, we've got to find out which of these um, are accurate. Which three of the following make up part of the database compiled by Dr. Oglevy? So what three things are going to be in her database? So we've already kind of read through a little bit. So we know that it's going to be... Um, We've got all the sort of key phrases down here in the eighth paragraph, which was "persons belonging to men and women." Okay, so what have we got here? List of the belongings of men and women: marriage, remarriage, and death. So we've got lists of belongings, um, inventories of agricultural equipment and craft tools, ownership of books, and it depends on how people learned. Um, mission tax lists, we've got here, recorded value of farms, um, signatures, and court records. Okay, so the key is, is the inventory she's analyzing, so what's she looking at? Okay, so we know for sure complete accounts of villagers' possessions at various times in their lives. Yeah, so this is the belongings of men and women at marriage, remarriage, and death, so we know it's going to be A. Um, records of agricultural livestock. Um, it says agricultural equipment, but it doesn't say livestock. Livestock means animals, so we know it's not going to be B. C, records which indicated the amount of money villagers could spend on education. It doesn't mention anything about education. Um, it says education-related objects, but it doesn't say how much money they had to spend on it, so we know it's not going to be C. D, accounts of a person's wealth, assets, and money owed for the purposes of taxation. So we know that we've said uh, we saw tax lists which recorded the value of farms, worship, assets, and debts. So tax list, so it's probably going to be, D is going to be one of our options. E, ledgers containing the amount of tax paid by villagers each year. It doesn't say 
anything about in the tax list about how much tax they pay each year. It just says the value of their possessions for tax purposes. So it's not going to be E. F, records of legal processes which kept people out of certain jobs or trades. So let's have a check for this. And because that makes me think of um, Juliana, which kept people out of jobs or trades. She wasn't allowed to do jobs that belonged to men. Um, court records revealed obstacles that stifled injuries like Juliana and her wall combing. Okay. So this is where I remember we remember that story from the start where Juliana wasn't allowed to do wall combing because she was a lady. Um, and so we think it's probably going to be F. Okay. Accounts of income from jobs. Okay. So there's no income. They don't mention income. They say tax. They say court records. Um, and they say inventories. Okay. So that's relatively straightforward. That's quite a nice question to have. Uh, then we've got our filling in the answer. Where was Julia Skirt White <laughs> made to appear in order to receive a fine for doing all authorized work? So we, let's go back up to the top about the story about Juliana. Um, she was forced to appear at the local Wilbur's Guild. Wilbur's Guild. Uh, she was summoned before the Guild Court. Okay, so she had to. She was summoned. She had to come. Um, so your answer for question 24 would be Guild Court. Question 25, what was listed in the thousands of accounts recently added to the database set up? Um, so what was recorded? So we know like that she was studying 9,000 handwritten inventories, listing over a million personal possessions over the centuries. So what was listed um, in the thousands of accounts? Handwritten inventories. So really, it's what is a handwritten inventory? Per, they're listing the personal possessions. Okay, so it would be personal possessions would go in here. How many connections between economic educa between education and economic growth could economists use in earlier studies? So this is something we looked at one. This idea that there's just one proxy. In previous studies, there was just one proxy. Let me just clear this. I think I have to scroll down just to find it. Uh, yep, here it is. Previous studies are just one proxy for linking education with economic growth. Um, so we're looking for the connection, the link, education, economic growth. Um, so it was just one. So you could say something like just one proxy. And then what group of mothers does the team want to study in order to find out if they had lower birth rates? Okay, so I kind of vaguely remember seeing about low, something about lower birth rates further on. <clears throat> so let's take a look. Mm, lower birth rates, lower birth rates. Lower birth rates. Uh, whether uh, fewer children, okay? The team will also ask whether more highly educated women had fewer children. So what group of mothers, and it's going to be highly educated. Okay. Okay, so this one is actually quite difficult. I think um, it's not... It's not as, as logically structured as a lot of other articles. So this one would be the one where you would just have to do a lot of scanning and a lot of quick reading. So this would be the most challenging part. So what can happen in, in for a lot of students is they get to the section two. It's kind of it's a difficult topic. It's not very clearly or logically structured to read through. Some of these questions really are quite challenging to do quickly under time pressure. So a lot of students can get sort of caught up in this section um, and not spend too much time on it and not move on to section three when they need to. So I always advise my students there is always going to be really tough questions and a tough paragraph because the point of the IELTS is for them to put you on a, on, a, on a curve, right, between level zero and level nine. So of course there are going to be these really tough questions. Don't let it throw you off. You know you're going to come across some questions which are designed to be really difficult to answer. And so don't get caught up on them. Don't find yourself spending five minutes trying to find the answer to one question. If you can't find the question relatively quickly, move on. 
make sure you've had a chance to look at all the questions across all three sections because when you get to section three or the next section there are going to be easier questions in that one that you can get points for okay so i always advise my students to do that but just going through this for me even now i'm like oh this me to do this under time pressure and exam circumstances would be quite challenging okay so i think this was one of the more tough reading questions you can practice